everyone, it's Nicole Spore here today for Simon Says Stamp with some mini slimline dandelion messages cards using components from the Simon Says Stamp May 2021 card kit called Dandelion Messages. I thought it would be so fun to take the Creative Expressions Dandelion Dreams paper from the kit and create several mini slimline cards. We're gonna be using the mini slimline rectangles dies, also from Simon Says Stamp. We're gonna be using both the large and the next size down. So the two biggest dies from this collection, we're gonna die cut each of these from the eight by eight Creative Expressions Dandelion Dreams paper. So the first one I'm using is kind of the purple blue color combination paper and then the second one is more of a rainbow pattern paper. We're gonna take the Dandelion Messages stamp set then and stamp these darling individual dandelions from the stamp set on our background. Now I picked some of my favorite Simon Says Stamp inks to stamp these dandelion images. And I picked the individual dandelion images so that it would be very easy to stamp each one in a different color. I am using for the purpley blue background, we're using five colors of ink. That's going to be hydrangea, deep purple, winter sky, Caribbean blue, and deep sea. So all shades of purples and blues. To make this really easy, I really recommend having some sort of a swatch, um, whether you keep your swatches of inks on a ring or in a binder, it makes it so easy. When I was pulling these out, I have to admit my swatch binder has been in a box. It, there's only a couple boxes that I had not unboxed um, from my move in July of 2019. And those were in one of them and I actually unboxed them in February of this year. I know, that's terrible. And I've looked, I've thought about it several times and I've always just been like, I don't wanna go look for it because there was just a few, like I said, a few boxes that didn't have my stuff out of them. And of course I knew that's exactly where this was. And since I got that swatch book out, I have used it so many times. So I think a swatch book is so handy because I was instantly able to look at my swatches and know what inks I wanted to use for this project. No guessing, no stamping them one time and realizing, oh, that's not the right color. It was such a time saver. I am gonna stamp five of the dandelions. Like I said, they're each in a different color. And then I'm going to stamp and emboss a sentiment over to the right. Now, because these two slimline rectangle backgrounds are different sizes, you'll notice that I am using my Misty to just kind of rearrange them. I wanted to show you how you could easily stamp two different size panels at the same time and get a completely, well, not a completely, I guess I shouldn't say completely, but a little bit different look. So one is gonna be the size of a mini slimline card that is three and an eighth by six and a quarter that's the size of a mini slimline that is the size of the bigger background and then the next one is a little bit smaller meaning when we place it on the mini slimline card base it's going to have a nice wide white border all the way around both are beautiful they just give you a little bit different look I am stamping sentiments from the Dandelion Messages stamp set on these backgrounds. First, I used You Are So Lovely. We are stamping that with clear embossing ink and heat embossing with white embossing powder. I wanted something bold and white to stand out against the beautiful kind of um, ombre effect pattern paper background. And then we're going to be using some of the Tim Holtz Ideology rose gold paper included in the kit to die cut this Simon Says Stamp script hello. I've die cut that from the rose gold paper and then the outline from some of the white cardstock included in the kit. We're going to adhere the metallic rose gold to the white with a little bit of glue. I like to use a fine tip applicator on my glue to glue that in place. Now, I noticed there's a smudge on Lovely. Um, what happened was while the embossing 
powder was still wet, I bumped it with my finger. So I'm taking the Couture Creations detailing tool and kind of erasing that. You're gonna have to be careful with pattern paper especially because some of the white from the back of the pattern paper is gonna show through. I just touched it so that it wasn't quite as prominent. Um, you can still see a little bit of a smudge there I decided to go ahead and leave it as is. This is uh, real life crafting. These things sometimes do happen. I hope that that tip though maybe would help you if something similar happens in the future and still makes this background usable without having to restamp it, especially in this case where I don't have this particular pattern paper left in the kit um, and I would just be discarding it and not have anything to replace it. We are going to stamp a couple of hearts from the Dandelion Messages stamp set as well. I opted to use Hydrangea in Deep Purple, the purple shades from the ink colors that I used. I have, um, you could use anything you want there. I'm only going to use two hearts. Often I will do things in odd numbers, but I opted not to this time. I don't really know why. I thought it really didn't need it and I thought visually it just a couple of them um, coming up from the loop in the hello would look cute. I will tell you I am going to change the placement on the second card simply because it falls better in the sentiments and in the design and with a smaller background. So that does change up a little bit. And that does allow you a little bit of creative freedom as far as um, maybe you don't want everything to be exactly the same. So you'll notice I'm using this fine tip applicator on the Ranger Multi Matte Medium. That is so handy, especially with a delicate die cut sentiment like this. And we're just going to adhere that then right above the You Are So Lovely stamped and embossed sentiment. And then we're going to take our hearts and stamp those, like I mentioned, with Hydrangea and Deep Purple ink. You could place them in your Misty one at a time and ink them up. I actually just left them both in, inked up one with one color and the other with another, and then stamp that right on my background. And there is our first card all finished. So beautiful. So while we have everything out, and because I have been just addicted to creating coordinating envelopes lately, Simon Says Stamp has beautiful mini slimline envelopes in several colors. I'm hoping that there are more coming to kind of like their regular line of envelopes because I love them in all the colors. But we're going to be using um, a couple of these to stamp coordinating envelopes. Now something with my coordinating envelopes, I generally kind of keep a super simple design. So I'm actually gonna take the single dandelion design from the stamp set and we are going to stamp that with a white ink right on the background. I am using a white ink. I'm actually using stays on ink, even though this isn't a uh, surface that really requires stays on. I've just found this white ink shows up really well. Um, and I'm using the white ink instead of stamping and embossing. I have found when stamping and embossing my envelopes, especially, Oftentimes, I think that the the uh, weight of the paper is not as heavyweight, and that might be part of the reason this happens, but my envelopes curl up, and I don't really love that all that much. If that's the only option, I will do it, but I've been trying to find other solutions, and this is one I've really liked. So it's another use for a stays on ink if you have it. I use my white stays on quite often, so I am going to go ahead and do this for both my... Um, deep purple and navy envelopes. I didn't have two of the purple envelopes left in my stash and I think the navy looks really pretty against uh, the card background as well. So that is the two envelopes I used for this set. And I went ahead and did both of those at the same time so that I could then go and clean up my background stamp. I like the stays on cleaner for this. Um, I will just put some on my stamp and then I rub away that excess stays on ink 
with a microfiber cloth. Now for the high friend card, I originally wanted to stamp, I thought it would be cute to stamp the high and the friend or high there, I'm so sorry, right next to each other. And I did, but I totally don't like how it turned out. Um, that's because it doesn't line up with the friend die cut sentiment very well. I'm going to kind of leave a little bit of this in so you can see how easy it is to do where I'm just masking off parts of the word and stamping. Uh, I started with the word there. I stamped and embossed that and then I am going to clean my stamp really well, line up the word high and stamp it in front. Now if this was a different kind of die, a different kind of setup, I think it would have been fine. I should have checked that before I did it. I really like leaving in either accidents or things that I change in some of my videos, just so you can kind of see the thought process as far as design and how I maybe come to my final decision and choice there in creating a card. Um, sorry, to get that lined up, sometimes it takes getting, at least for me, I have to get right over my project and my head got in the way. So I'm lining up the word high now. And I use a little post-it tape to mask off the word I don't want to ink up. And I'm going to show you this because it does look really cute. I like the high and the there right next to each other. In fact, I have a video on my uh, personal channel where I took a greeting from this stamp set and kind of manipulated it uh, in that way, which worked really, really well. Um, I used the with sympathy and switched up the placement, but I don't love it. I don't want to redo my background. So you're going to notice I'm figuring out my placement for this friend die cut. Again, I die cut the word friend from the rose gold Tim Holtz paper included in the kit, the shadow from the white cardstock included in the kit. And once I figured out my placement, I'm actually going to stamp the high there as is. The reason I switched that because of the way the friend shadow die cut is, we're not going to be able to see the whole word at least as close as I want it. If you want to drop that friend die cut down a little bit, you could have used it the way it was. But I really like my sentiments most of the time to be a little bit closer, a little bit more buddied up close together. Um, and so I opted instead because it really fits nicely there between the letter I and the letter D the way it is. So I stamped it and embossed it as is for the finished card. And we're just going to cover up what I previously did with the die cut. Then of course, we're going to finish by adding um, our actual die cut on top of the shadow here. I like to use some tweezers to help hold that and put it right in place where it's going to go. These tweezers, these are the reverse tweezers from Spellbinders. I've actually uh, been using the two new Spellbinders tweezers on everything. I love them. I think they're fantastic. Um, and tweezers help keep your fingers out of glue when you are assembling small die cut pieces or things like that. This panel is the one that is smaller than the mini slimline card base, meaning when we place this on our mini slimline, you're going to see a nice white border all the way around, which ties in nicely to the white shadow of the word friend, as well as the white embossing. So just a little bit different look. I'll show you the cards side by side. Um, you might've noticed that at the beginning of the video as well. Um, if you wanna see a comparison of how the two different backgrounds look. Then we also need to add some little hearts. And as I was mentioning, when I stamped the hearts on the previous card, there's not a great place to put the hearts um, kind of over to that right side like we did for the first card. So I'm going to switch that up and move those down below the word friend, especially since we moved the sentiments up on our card because I kind of changed how that placement went. There's going to be a nice little area right below that I feel is the perfect spot for our hearts. So that's what we're going to do now is just stamp our two little hearts right down here below. And I think this time I actually opted to stamp them one at a time. It's gonna just be a little bit quicker. 
Maybe I didn't. Maybe I stamped them together. Maybe it was on the other, the next set of cards. Oftentimes when I have all the supplies out like I do today, it's so much easier to just go ahead and create a whole bunch, especially with relatively simple designs like this. So this is a great way to add a bunch of cards to your craft stash really quickly in not much time, especially if you do it pretty assembly line style. So that let's say instead of switching ink colors between the two like I'm doing today, and even if you want to, it does go pretty fast, but if you wanna do a bunch in the same colors, you can simply die cut all the backgrounds and then stamp each of the flowers like I did, and then assemble them as you want. You can even switch up the sentiments. There are the two finished cards side by side. So I wanted to show just a variation on this and also using a few less colors, a few less stamps on different backgrounds. My background ink or my ink choices were influenced by the backgrounds. I love this subtle ombre rainbow, so, so, so pretty. And we're going to take then our stamps from Dandelion Messages and stamp them in colors that coordinate and complement these backgrounds. So starting with our first stamped dandelion that is going to be in simon says stamp rose apple ink again i picked my ink choices directly from the pattern paper so kind of where the flowers fall is how i chose the colors i'm using um, i am again going to stamp both of them both these backgrounds at the same time even though one is a little bit smaller background than the other Next, we are going to stamp a dandelion in Simon Says Stamp Sunkissed Ink. That uh, dandelion is moving from kind of the pink to into the orange area. So I thought that that would be perfect there. Again, we'll stamp both of those backgrounds. And our final dandelion is going to be stamped with the Simon Says Stamp Hydrangea ink, which is the lighter purple ink we used on the first card. But it really um, works well in the purple area over there to the left. Now I opted to only do three dandelions on this card, just a little bit different style where I did the five on the other one. Um, I did three on this. You could also completely do maybe a border all the way across the bottom and do all of the shades of the rainbow. I think that would be pretty as well. Just like the previous two cards, we are going to add the script hello and the friend die cut sentiments and I just picked different stamped and embossed sentiments for these. So we're gonna do our friendship means the world to me with the die cut hello on the first card, the bigger background. Um, I picked this for the bigger background specifically because this stamped and embossed sentiment is a little bit longer. So I thought it fit this particular background a little bit better. Another thing that made this work with this background is there were less dandelions stamped. So it just naturally kind of is framed up by those dandelions on the left and looks, to my eye, it just looks really nice and balanced. For the friend card, we're going to stamp thank you for thinking of me down below the friend sentiment. I love showing different ways that you can incorporate maybe the same die or in this case the same two dies with multiple stamped and embossed sentiments to tell um, completely different types of greetings and get the most out of those supplies. So lots of great sentiments in the dandelion messages. They can be used on their own. You definitely would not have to incorporate um, a die cut greeting. I love die cut greetings with stamped greetings and I will do that a lot. Plus I really wanted to add some sort of dimension mention to my card because these cards are fairly flat. Almost everything is happening on this pattern paper background, which is great because these are going to be very easy to mail with no dimension to them. But I love the little layering of the die cut sentiments as I think it adds a little bit to the design. Plus we get to use that beautiful rose gold Tim Holtz paper that is so, so pretty. Again, we're going to follow the cues from the design of our sentiments about where we want to add our hearts. I did stamp all of the hearts with rose apple. Um, I didn't switch up the colors for these. 
And something to note as well, because it's it's really evident when I first stamp the images that they're more vibrant, but as the ink dries, they mute a little bit as they're absorbed into the pattern paper backgrounds. These are dye inks, and so they are going to definitely uh, fade just a little bit. Now I want these envelopes to completely match my cards. So this time, instead of stamping that individual image, I did go ahead on these cotton pink mini slimline envelopes and stamp the three dandelion images I used for the card in the same colors that I used for the cards on my envelope. So that's gonna be Simon Says Stamp Rose Apple, Sun Kissed and Hydrangea Inks. Just a little trio of these on each mini slimline and they are going to perfectly coordinate then with our cards. Once I have those completely stamped I am going to go ahead and say this project is all finished. You could so so easily go ahead and create even more you're getting quite a bit more pattern paper in this kit and you could even do this with standard a2 size cards very very easily do a similar sort of design do assembly line style uh, process and create a bunch of great cards to just have on hand for when you need them thank you guys so much for joining me today for these mini slimline dandelion messages cards featuring the simon says stamp may 2021 card kit called dandelion messages please be sure to visit the simon says stamp blog for more information thanks for joining me and we'll see you next time